the movement started very, very late uh, in the uh, 19th century, along with the uh, Iranian uh, constitutional revolution, 1905, 1910, 11. Uh, during that movement, women became very active. Iranian intellectual got involved with the uh, movement. They had brought new ideas from the West and they have uh, realized that the Iran was way behind uh, the civilization that has been growing and developing in the West, particularly in terms of technology, military, economy, and so on. Those ideas and those uh, intellectuals who have been sent, the students who have been sent outside to go and get education, and when they came back, they began to uh, bring ideas from the West, uh, modern ideas, and try to introduce it to the community. And one of the areas that they uh, have noticed in terms of the backwardness, in terms of the uh, difficult condition that existed was the status of women. And there were many, many women, individual women, who began uh, and got themselves involved in writing about and trying to uh, make uh, various kind of agitation in society, uh, not a very big, but at the individual level, uh, they actually later developed even underground uh, groups themselves, their association, and they uh, started to advocate for the women's, uh, against the laws, uh, discriminatory laws that existed or laws that even didn't exist, but the traditions were very really dominant. And uh, they met opposition, not only from men, uh, but they also from the religious group in a very co uh, cohesive way. Uh, even during the revolution, uh, there were efforts to uh, demonstrate in the laws that established uh, the, in the constitution. But unfortunately, the power of religious groups were very strong and limited the rights of women. When we say women's movement, uh, we are not talking in the terms of classical movements that you have had in terms of Russian revolution or, or, or uh, social movements that led to uh, emergence of Iranian revolution and so on, because uh, it is not a movement on the basis of class, leadership, organization that way. There is no unified uh, structure that really represents typical classical social movement. Uh, by the language of the modern sociological theory and uh, social science theories, uh, contemporary theory, the Iranian social women's movement should be identified, uh, as I had argued uh, back to the three decades ago, uh, as a new social movement. As a new social movement, it is a very, uh, horizontally organized and, and uh, does not have the kind of organizational structure that the classical movement have like a political parties and so on. Even in the, uh, there's no specific one person on the leadership. Uh, actually the leadership is very diverse uh, and scattered and uh, uh, very uh, uh, non-concentrated um, in terms of even issues, uh, the organization of the movement. but. For our sake today, uh, when we talk about Iranian women's movement, we are talking about the efforts of Iranian women from late 19th century to today to achieve, to change their status in society and to achieve equality and their rights, equal rights for themselves. That's fighting for their rights and trying to change laws and rules and conditions of society so that improve their status in society. That is really the effort. So in order to understand the Iranian women's movement, we really have to look at it in terms of different stages that it has gone through. So the curve that they have gone through, it has gone through the constitutional period and then later, when nine, by 1925, when Reza Shah comes to power, his period till 1940s, uh, when he leaves the country and his son takes over, and then uh, Iran goes through another stage in 1950s, 
when there is uh, the uh, coup d'etat against uh, Dr. Mossad there, and then the Shah comes back. So then during the Mohammad Reza Shah period, particularly 1953 till 1979 is the period of Pahlavi. Uh, that's a very important period. Then we move with the 1979 Iranian revolution. From that moment, again, we have, even within this Islamic period, we have again a stages. The first stage is the, the eight years of war and the beginning of the revolution. So the first decade pretty much has its own character. So the second stage uh, is the stage of the, in the next decade when Rafsanjani comes to power and later um, Muhammad Khatami comes forward. This two period actually has its own characterization and, and really qualitatively and quantitatively affect women's movement. And then uh, by uh, when Ahmadinejad comes to power, uh, and we have this, uh, the uh, Green Movement in 1988, uh, we begin to uh, have a different, uh, 2008, I'm sorry, uh, we begin to have a different quality and the movement goes through a different a, a stage and different uh, kind of uh, motion. These are the stages that, that women's movement have gone through. So if we can look at the curve, the curve has a great deal of zigzag, but the direction is toward up and overall from, from late 19th century to today. During the constitutional mo uh, movement, the most important achievement Rewan movement had was the first and foremost important one is really the educational women got the right to go to school. And that was the, for something they fought hard for it. Uh, during the Pahlavi period, particularly this took off. Uh, the initial effort was coming from the missionaries, from the people from Europe who had come in. Uh, the the Baha'i movement itself who had, who had put more emphasis in women's and had a different perspectives on women issues. And these things all together helped uh, that women slowly got into the educational system. Obviously, those women were mostly educated themselves or came from educated family. They were members of the more uh, upper uh, echelons of the society, upper classes, and uh, they were mostly urban. Uh, till we get to Pahlavi, uh, Mohammad Reza, Reza Shah period in 1925, starting from that you have basically universal education instituted and women schools began uh, in, a ma in a very broad way in all the cities. And that's a new stage that that's very important. The second, and then it continued basically throughout and even till today, the uh, women have continually increased their share of participation in educational system. Uh, not only in terms of uh, getting education, but also becoming teachers and then moving from the elementary school to high school and uh, being professors of the university. And now we have all of these things in, the, in a, sca a span of the hundred or so years uh, that's been achieved. Now, the second achievement was that uh, it was actually the corollary of another um, uh, process, and that was a separation of uh, church from the court system. That was something that Pahlavi was successfully after the revolution was able to limit the ability of the court and bring the women issue of family laws, establish families laws within a civil court, uh, a more secularized court. And that really, limited the ability of the religious power, religious groups in Iran to dictate uh, all aspects of life. They still were, were very dominant. They are still, many of the laws were affected by Islam even as of today, even as of the, as late as 1978 where the Shah was. Uh, particularly family laws was one of the areas the uh, clerics uh, who from the very beginning had a hard time with the concept of uh, women's uh, movement or women's equal rights. Uh, they perceived it ever and, and always coached it in a very uh, religious framework. Uh, so when the courts got separated from them and then basically it became a more of a, a secularized courts in some way, not, not all the laws, but at least uh, they, 
uh, judges all became basically went through the university education and they received their degree from university and then they came and, and dominated. So the clergy lost two domain, which was very influential on the rights of women and the women's movement. One, they lost control of educational system to a large extent. And second one was the law and the courts. Uh, these two were very helpful to women. However, the, we have to say Iran was a pre pretty much till around the end of the Shah's time was a society uh, with major division between cities and, and uh, urban areas of the cities and then in our rural area and uh, between religious and non-religious or secularized aspects of society. Those division continue to play not only along the line of religion and non-religion or secularization, but also along the line of uh, control of religious law over the lives of women. So uh, even though we had civil courts and we had basically secular courts in this uh, urban, uh, or rural area, uh, still religious groups were very dominant and had a tremendous amount of influence on the way women lived and uh, conducted themselves in society. So this division uh, played out all the way throughout Pahlavi period. When the later period when the uh, revolution happens, of course, everything is reversed. During the Pahlavi, basically, a great deal was achieved in terms of education of women and improvement of women, particularly curtailing the men's ability to have uh, multiple wives. Uh, uh, basically, that was a, a rule that put limitation on the number of uh, wives people can have. Later, that limitation in the pa Muhammad Reza Pahlavi period uh, was much more expanded. Uh, uh, people could get multiple wives if they wanted, but they should have had permits of the other uh, uh, wives, basically the first wife. And usually that was of course manipulated in a very patriarchal society. People would do all kinds of things to get away or play around the law and, and get their way if they wanted. But in general, it was a very successful period in the sense of secularization of the issue and uh, making it look bad. Uh, so Iranian society pre-Iranian revolution of 1979 pretty much had regarded people who would have multiple wives as kind of traditional backward. And it wasn't very pleasant things. And even those people who engaged in it, they had to hide it. So that's a kind of achievement that we had up at that point. And unfortunately that was lost by the revolution. And nowadays, uh, having more than one wife uh, has become very open, unfortunately, and promoted by the government. So then we go in 1960s, uh, the Pahlavi, when Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi became very strong and began its uh, white revolution. Uh, during that period in 1963, uh, he began to uh, give women rights uh, to, in terms of uh, enfranchisement, uh, being, uh, being able to vote. And that immediately uh, was opposed by the cleric and there was uh, a great deal of uh, tension in society. And uh, Ayatollah Khomeini at that time was the most uh, influential voice who opposed both uh, the, uh, the entrance of women into the society in the way in which Shah has designed it. Uh, the Iranian white revolution, according to the Shah, originally has six principle, later was added, and finally with the 12th principle. But several of those principle provided opportunity and empowered women. One of them was, of course, for first and foremost, the enfranchisement and the voting right. The second one was women were able to go to uh, a, a health corps, and, and another one was a educational corps. Uh, these are the youngest uh, students who finished the high school. If they were not going directly to the university, they should go for a two year period for a period of training, which would send them to the villages to do either in the area of health or in the area of classes, teaching classes to the uh, people in the rural area. These two opportunity actually, were, actually was very, very helpful to women who were going through a school system at that time. So those are some of the achievements we had in that period. 
Uh, back in, uh, starting 1963, one of the major other achievements that uh, Pahlavi was, uh, regime had uh, contributed uh, to women's uh, position was the family laws. The family laws basically uh, try to bring women to the center of this law. The decisions, uh, some, some rights and decisions of women were recognized, as I said, limited the ability of men in terms of divorce, right, divorce, divorce laws, uh, the custody laws and so on. So there was a lot of achieve, even inheritance laws and so on, even though religion still was dominant or everything was coached within a religious dom domain, it's still um, there were changes. And the, the clerics basically opposed it from that moment on. And that battle continued till you get 1979, the Iranian revolution happens. Uh, the first year and a half of the Iranian revolution, women came massively out for revolution. And uh, when Ayatollah Khomeini arrived in Tehran, uh, then later went to Rome and then uh, from there, uh, the first order came after the revolution. The first victim were women uh, by ordering them actually that uh, they should cover their head and uh, they should not appear in, the, uh, uh, in various government offices uh, in the form of not having a hijab or veil on their head. That was a very important one. There was a fight. There was a massive amount of women that came to, in Tehran uh, outside. Unfortunately, it did not get adequate support from the various political, even secular and leftist within political groups, because at that time, uh, everything was uh, coached in terms of fighting a dictatorship and imperialism or American presence in Iran. And the women issue, it never really uh, registered at the high level, even among the political groups. Uh, I could actually say at this point that uh, one of the challenges that was and it still remains uh, a challenge is always women's movement during from Pahlavi period when we went there, we got the communist party even, women's movement basically was a part of or became a part of those political movement. So the national movement, uh, national uh, uh, or religious national groups, as well as each one of them basically had a women section, but they coached everything in terms of under the umbrella of the broader political fight. And in some way, the women's right became basically secondary to achievement of political right. And that is still, unfortunately, even as of today, affects the minds of a great deal of intellectuals in Iran and the, the groups who are involved. After the Iranian revolution, after suppression of women's uh, and, and their rights uh, in the Islamic Republic, the first decade, basically we had war. After that, basically women were suppressed. Uh, however, something very strange, uh, unique and dialectically if we view it happened. And number one is that the war required women to come and support their men because men, most of the men, particularly young people had gone to the front and therefore the government needed, Islamic Republic needed women to come out and help in areas where they were needed, particularly on the background and whether the family was, many, some of them had to come in and work uh, to provide for the family. And there were women who went to the water area, even working in the area of backstage, providing food, making food and so on and so on. And that's one of the factor. The second factor, Islamic Republic having this mass, being a mass revolution, uh, had brought women out in the sense of protest and being in public domain protesting. And it needed them again in the voting booth. And that was very crucial. And women therefore came out massively in there. What one other sociological factor which tremendously helped women here was that during the Pahlavi, religious group basically and religious people themselves, the, the traditional segment of society, whether they were in the, in the city or whether they were particularly in the rural cities or even the villages, they didn't want their women in public. Men did not feel comfortable in terms of their religious sensitivity that their women be exposed to the outside world and interact with men in an open way. So 
religious women, traditional women, during the Pahlavi stayed home, they were not having as much of a massive presence in the society uh, because of the tradition, not because of the government, uh, partially because of the developmental issue. There were not jobs for them. There were not, there were not enough things in society that pull them in or absorb them outside. And then of course there was attitude of patriarchal attitude of the society didn't want them and their men didn't feel comfortable. These groups are the first groups of women who actually after revolution get the chance to go to public and be in the open area. Now their men could no longer, even though they maintained their ideological or their sensitivity to women issue in conservative way, they couldn't oppose because they, before they said, this is Pahlavi period, it's a modern westernized, they wanna see our women naked. Now they didn't have any more excuse. The women said outside is good. Now it's Islamicized environment, it's a safe environment. So women actually can use. While this interestingly contradictorily and, and dialectically as these traditional women got a chance to come public, the government, a theocratic government, made every effort to put the secular women back, either limit their ability in the present, their presence in the government, in the open area, particularly uh, in areas where they were expressing themselves as uh, the way they dressed, they did not have cover or adequate power. And that continues even today, that fight continues. So secular women got oppressed. They were the first victims of Iranian revolution. Religious women had a chance to gain actually access to the public space. Now that separation, that gap between secular and religious women continues to play itself out even as of today that we talk about. So during, during all of these 42 years of Iranian uh, Islamic Republic, this has been a major issue. And one of the achievement of the secular women's movement in the, during the Islamic Republic is actually to establish some kind of organic relationship between these two camp, something that the government continues as of today to not allow it. And where it happens, even it tries to separate it with one way or another, all kinds of laws or rules or kind of uh, insinuation of one type or another to make these two sides distrust each other. And that is, has not happened in, unfortunately. And one of the aspects of the Iranian women's movement today or, or after revolution is that these women actually have begun to engage in a dialogue and influence the religious groups actually to look at the issues in a much more secular way. And that is uh, something that actually has created some change in the religious groups and religious camp in the society. Now, one major other development between the women's movement before Iranian revolution, after Iranian revolution is the independence of the women's movement. So as I mentioned before, prior to revolution, much of women's issues, if it was addressed at all, it was under umbrella of the political parties and, and other uh, political groups. And political groups, of course, their first aim is political change and access to power. Now, after revolution, Iranian women actually realized that dependency is not working to their advantage, particularly given that the men in those movement continue even as of today to maintain a very traditional view of the women's gender relationship in society. And they have still maintain a good deal of their sensitivity to women's, whether it's a women's body, whether it's women's hair, whether it's women's interaction with their uh, stranger men or men not, not outside of the family and so on. So women's movement began to acquire an independence character of its own. Women have now basically focused on, they have men allies that participate, work with them, but unfortunately not as many as they, uh, we, we would like to see, uh, but, but more or less they have tried to focus on women issue. 
This independence also had a focus, a focal independence, in the sense that they began to focus on issues that affect women. Women's issues are the primary for them. They're not concerned with the political power. They want to change the laws that affects the lives of women. Of course, they are all, many of them, most of them basically, even the religious groups themselves, they are concerned with the discriminatory laws against uh, women. However, and they are concerned with the broader uh, nature of the society and discrimination and uh, dictatorships that has been established uh, after the revolution. But uh, still, women have learned, particularly women's movement, have learned that they can achieve more if they go for less, a step by a step, rather than the big projects of overthrowing the government, which is the aim of most of the political groups, women actually are focusing a step by a step because their goal is not overthrow of the government. That's the job of the larger movement. But in terms of their own movement, their goal first and foremost is the discriminatory law and then empowerment of women and establishing of laws that actually protects the lives of women and gives and improves the opportunities of women. Have the women achieve uh, equality? Well, first we have to define what is equality. <laughs> Itself a very controversial concept. The Iranian society continues to remain a uh, class-based society. And unfortunately, during this regime, despite of all the hopes of revolution, which would equalize the status of the economic status of people, unfortunately, this regime has now acquired its own class structure uh, to, to some extent actually has become uh, much more uh, unequal than, uh, than uh, the previous regime. Uh, in that sense, therefore, there is, uh, if we talk about equality or inequality, we need to realize women not only, uh, as, as even though women are half of the society and as an stratum, they are independent and have their own issues, yet they are members of different social classes. They are members of different tribes, different ethnic groups, different religious groups, and their religions have the specification of itself, their ethnic culture, the particularly traditional values, family values, uh, 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 social lifestyle, it varies across. And these things cut through and creates an intersectionality that when we talk about equality, we have to understand there's tremendous of inequality over a structure that is moving toward a better society, a more equal opportunity for men and women, at least in that regard, the gender relationship. One more uh, qualification we need to make, and that is uh, where do we compare Iranian women's movement uh, with? Uh, if we compare them with the United States, of course, we are way, way the movement is behind. Uh, if you compare it with European, particularly much more advanced societies they are in terms of the gender relationship, uh, probably we, we are way far behind. However, we need to really compare Iranian women movement with the movements around the region itself in the context of the, the area. So in that sense, if you look at it, uh, I would say that Iranian women have gone through up and downs. And you know, during the Pahlavi certain uh, achievements, we had tremendous achievement, but those achievements unfortunately uh, were reversed. Uh, and uh, then women are fighting back and are getting all of that stuff. If I use the language of uh, one of my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Uh, Haide uh, Morisi, uh, in a language that she uh, expresses, she says that, uh, this is her wording, uh, I exactly quote, women's effort in the Islamic Republic signifies uh, not only women's determination and their uh, uh, enormous efforts to expose the prisons of, or, or escape the uh, prisons of the femininity and, and sex roles, uh, uh, defined and guarded by the guardians of Sharia and the Islamic regime, but the Islamic Re Republic did not open the gates. Women are basically jumping over the fences. So women very, very creatively 
uh, in the past, particularly since 19, uh, I would say 19, in 1990s, uh, in particular during Khatami period, they started to actually be determined to achieve their rights. So the movement has now has a different characteristic. The movement has basically become very um, individualized. Uh, every woman at every corner, basically uh, every corner of society at every level of the society takes upon himself or herself to act and, and make changes that basically is possible there and the person is interested in. So we see today women very, very active in the theaters, in the movies, cinema, uh, art, painting, uh, a great deal of achievement in those areas, despite of all kinds of restriction that the Islamic Republic has put on them. And uh, they are today, if you look at watch the Iranian movies, there's a great deal of creativity, even with all the limitation that they have to cover themselves. And you would be surprised how creative they are. Uh, the movement even has moved, uh, individualized the, the struggle. So uh, the personal being political, political has become personal. In that sense, the movement has uh, uh, given itself uh, the room for being creative in terms of ways in which they would change the situation for themselves in terms of clothing, in terms of uh, expression, physical expression in society, in terms of in the area of music. More women today are going to, are going to art classes, music classes, than even men went during the late Pahlavi period. And uh, despite of the fact that the women's voice have been basically uh, suffocated, today many women are underground singing and singing in the group and then posting it on the internet themselves. So there is a great deal of achievement in that sense, in, in gaining independence of itself, in uh, being active to uh, resist, uh, particularly in a, a, a civil resistance. Uh, some of the recent still say women right, uh, women groups who are basically have the White Wednesday, where on Wednesday they would take off their scarf uh, as much as they can, where I, they can, and they take pictures, they video, develop videos, they send it outside. In terms of the discourse about women, a number of changes has taken place in the past 30 years, at least in Iran. One is that the focus that used to pre prior to the revolution being only on the family now has changed to the question of laws that affect not only the family, but women in a specific. And that's a very important change. Women particularly, and when it comes even to children and the girls uh, and the schools and so on. So that's a, a fundamental, rad fundamental radical change. Women's right also is now uh, measured and viewed and conceptualized in terms of the human rights. And that's a very, very important change. Before it was complain against the discrimination and changing the discriminatory law. Now there is a reference point. And the reference point now is human rights charter and, uh, and uh, international UN conventions and so on. And therefore women are, are really discussing their issues and concern in that framework. Uh, one other area that is really affected in women's movement, the discourse which used to be always ideological in terms of whether we are socialists, we are going to be pro-capitalist, uh, whether we, are, we have pro this movement or that movement, that discourse has become very non-ideological now. Women's movement issues are discussed not as much ideologically anymore, uh, more practical, dealing with the every issues in a way in which that affects the actual lives of women, the way they can conduct themselves in society, the way in terms of their opportunities, whether they have equal opportunity with men in any area, even, even areas that are not very uh, appealing to anybody to go, but women are going to all professions and competing with men and they are asking for a space and opportunity to, to be a competitor with men. And uh, uh, recently the movement has uh, 
as a collective frame uh, for women is changing its tactic and becomes individualized, as I mentioned it earlier, very creatively, very diversely. And so the discourse is now a day individualized in the sense of tactics. Uh, it is much more broader in terms of the perspectives, uh, perceiving the issue of women's rights, not in terms of just this existing law, but also in terms of fundamental women's rights that needs to be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm.